In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to use a gadget to easily create a perfectly sized rounded blank ready for rotary machining. This may be required if you don't already have a perfectly round blank or that we may be starting from square stock. Now what you see on the screen is the toolpath we're going to be working our way towards, but we're going to start by closing this file down and then creating a new file. And in this case, it will be a rotary job type. The uh, job size will be a column length of 12 inches with a diameter of 3 inches. Our Z0 will be from the center of our cylinder, i.e. the cylinder axis. Our XY datum will be in the lower left-hand corner. Our machine is set up where the linear axis will be along the x-axis, therefore we will be wrapping the y values and our modeling resolution will be set to very high. So as I OK this now, I now am faced with my new job space and of course I could go on and create some finishing toolpaths, but I need to bear in mind that the stock that I want to work from has not been correctly set yet. So we need to trim that down with a toolpath to create the right size stock. So we've got a neat tool that's available in VCarve Pro and Aspire, which is the ability to create a rounding toolpath. So from the gadget menu, I'm going to select wrapping and the create rounding toolpath and up will pop a form with a little bit of information at the top to explain how it works, followed by a number of parameters. If we move down to blank size and shape, we have two options here, either to work from maybe from some slightly oversized stock where we need to sort of trim it down maybe to uh, the correct size, or alternatively, you may be working from square stock and that's what we'll assume for this project. And I've set my uh, square blank to be a diameter of 3.25 inches, which of course is greater than the three inch stock that we want to be left with when we do finishing. Uh, below that we have the machining method and depending on the type of blank size you've got three different options here. For the square blank we're going to be using the optimized raster at the bottom uh, which will be using a sort of a, a long the cylinder raster technique uh, where it's creating toolpath in the corners to trim that down to the correct size. But you've got two options above radial and raster and those would be options for using maybe with a just a slightly oversized diameter blank that you're trying to trim down to the right size. You do have the option to leave an allowance on. Um, it may be that you're using a particularly coarse tool and you want to leave a little bit on maybe to do a little uh, semi-finishing pass. Uh, but in this case, we're going to use our end mill and trim right down to the correct stock size. Now, at the moment, we uh, come down to now selecting the tool. You can see no tool is currently selected. We've already set the toolpath name, so by default, this picks rounding toolpath. So I'm going to come across now and select my tool. And in this case, I'm going to be using my quarter inch end mill here. So I'm going to select that from the list and then come down and select. OK, so that will then pop that into the form. It can recognize it there, the quarter inch end mill. And as soon as I hit OK here, it will automatically create the toolpath. OK, so I'm just going to select OK there now. And I'm in a position to move across now to our machining. So I'm going to go across to machining now. And one thing to bear in mind is to make sure before I commit the toolpath that the material setup was correct for that particular toolpath. We can see our diameter is three inches, okay, our Z0 in the center of the cylinder, etc., and our rapid heights and our start position, etc. Everything seems to be okay, so I'm happy to proceed with the toolpath. Because I selected OK, it has warned me that if any parameters had changed, I would need to recalculate the toolpath. But of course, I haven't changed, so I can select No. And we can move across now to look at the toolpath in the simulation. So I'm going to go over to Preview Toolpaths, and we can see the rounding toolpath now. And I'm just going to play that now, which will bring the stock down to the correct size. So that should now be three inches in diameter. OK, so if we have a look at the toolpath now and try and look along the X axis, we can see that. And it may be best in this case just to view without the color shading on. So we can see here by looking along the axis of the column, we can see the rounding toolpath. You can see basically a sort of square could easily be placed over the top of that toolpath, showing that it's sort of a step routine inwards to remove that stock. Now, one thing to bear in mind, if we go back to the color shaded view and actually draw the origin on, 
we need to make sure that when we set this stock up on the machine that the uh, one of the flat edges is parallel to your XY plane to make sure that it's removing the stock in the correct location. Of course, we don't want to set this up with the stock rotated where essentially it might be cutting in free space and isn't removing the material where it should do. So just make sure that the stock is set up with the flat edge planer to the XY plane, okay? So with that, I'm happy with the toolpath and I can now move to think about actually outputting that to the machine using a rotary post. OK, so I'm going to come across now and just close out of the preview and come across to the save toolpaths. And I now need to select the toolpath, which is already selected at the bottom of the screen, which is now showing in the save toolpath form at the top. And I need to select my relevant post processor. In this case, from my large list of posts, I'm going to select a Mac 3 controller where I will be wrapping the Y value. So the Y displacement will be changing from a linear movement to a rotational movement. So I'll select that post now and, of course, save that toolpath out. So the final thing for me to do is just to save out this project. So I'm just going to close out that form now and come up to File, Save As. And we're going to save this as creating a rounded toolpath. So I can come back in at a later point, open up the project and post the toolpaths out.